because some people need everything spelled out for them. This is the social mythos about RAM upgrades that I was talking about when I made that video about upgrading the RAM and what people think of RAM upgrades and whatnot. Poor man's upgrade. Search for it on Google. First two results, the self-confessed geek, memory, the poor man's upgrade, about RAM, the poor man's upgrade, poor man's upgrade, poor man's upgrade, poor man's upgrade. Yes, I've been hearing for many years that upgrading your RAM is the poor man's upgrade. And one of the unfortunate side effects of this uh, catchphrase is that people get the idea that RAM speeds up your computer. Now, notice that... Uh, if you look around and actually read up on the so-called poor man's upgrade, you will find again and again and again and again and again whether or not people can get how RAM works correct or not, they will constantly refer to increasing the capacity of the memory as a way to speed up your computer. It's not that simple, folks. RAM doesn't speed up your computer if you increase the amount of RAM that you have. What it really does is it uncorks your computer. Instead of improving the computer's total or maximum performance, it, it unleashes performance that it had all along, but it couldn't execute because of the bottleneck that was your RAM amount. There's, that's where people get this misconception that RAM speeds up, to, speeds up your computer, and we get stuff like the, uh, the poor man's upgrade and stuff along those lines. Now, RAM's speed, on the other hand, is a completely different story. In that case, if you upgrade your RAM speed, duh, you're changing the speed, and the faster RAM will have some effect, although it's questionable at best. It'll work better in some circumstances than others. Quite frankly, the, the mere fact that again and again and again and again and again I hear the RAM upgrade, there we go, being referred to as being referred to in terms of its capacity rather than its speed, it's obviously not anything all that great. I have heard of APU-based systems being sensitive to the RAM speed because the APU's integrated graphics will use the onboard RAM as video memory, but unfortunately, it's just not that simple, folks. It's not, it, it's not real. I mean, if you talk about speed, you're talking about speed. But if you're talking about RAM, Many, 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 many times you're talking about the capacity rather than the speed and the timings of the chips. And if you want to split hairs, you can play with speed and timings and stuff like that, but again and again and again and again, when I hear the term poor man's upgrade, which is the mythos that I was responding to, it has something to do with the capacity. Rarely do you find someone actually explaining this correctly, as I'm about to demonstrate. The Self-Confessed Geek, a blog entry, uh, let's see, a blog entry from December 2012, from the looks of it, based on the URL, can't really find a timestamp on here. Back when I used to build and overclock my own PC's memory was called the poor man's upgrade. For much less money than replacing your CPU, which usually involved replacing your motherboard and all the hassle that entailed, you could max out your memory and keep your PC's performance contemporary for another 12 months or so. These days, it's just not cost-effective to build your own PC, well, that's debatable, but it's still useful to be able to upgrade your desktop when required. da dee da dee da dee da To update my PC, I took advantage of a Black Friday offer and bought 8 gigs of gamer's memory. Da-da-da, etc. Yeah, so, I'm not saying upgrading your, your memory will make your old machine new again, but it still seems to be a cheap way of keeping your middle-aged current machine current if you use a lot of memory-intensive programs, which, by the way, is correct, but notice what never gets mentioned here. Again and again and again and again and again. Speed. It's the capacity. Oh, I just upgrade the capacity. Oh, ooh, yeah, this kind of does set the standard, doesn't it? Oh, yes, PC Pit Stop. Pit Stop Mechanics Lesson. About RAM, the poor man's upgrade. Out to boost your PC's performance of all the upgrades you can make to your system, increasing your RAM is one of the easiest, most cost-effective, and most noticeable upgrades you can make. And even if your system is already a screamer, more RAM always comes in handy, especially for intensive gaming and graphics, multimedia work, and it's a solid investment for the future of your PC. Capacity, 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 where's the mention of speed? Where's the mention of RAM speed or timings? Does RAM speed up my computer? Gives a lot of interesting results. Next up, we might start seeing some mixed results on here. PC Advisor, and this thing is having a lot of trouble with its tabs. You know what, uh, let's, just close, let's just start closing these tabs, because uh, I don't want to crash Firefox from too many tabs. 
All right, well, upgrading RAM make my PC or laptop faster. PC upgrade speed. Information about using RAM to increase PC speed. Yeah, to increase speed. So, okay, so we're screwing up already. Based on the information you su supplied, the short answer is maybe. It's important to check with version of Windows. Yeah, 32-64-bit, da-da-da-da-da. Let's see here. Whether or not the extra memory make, will make a noticeable difference, there's the key word there, noticeable, will depend on how you use your PC and whether or not you have many applications running simultaneously. Adding extra memory will certainly allow your PC to cope much better with multiple browser tabs. At the time of writing this PC, running the Google Chrome browser, which is currently using over 3 gigs of RAM all by itself. And then they explain virtual memory and stuff like that, and mention that if you're not doing a lot of memory intensive stuff, you might not notice the upgrade as much. And then an SSD can actually be a bigger performance increase. Yes. That's right. As SSDs get more competitive, they become the poor man's upgrade more than anything else because you can start an SSD collection and take them with you from computer to computer. Funny how that works. HowStuffWorks.com, if that old tab will close. Yeah, we got a ton of tabs to go through here. Does adding more RAM to your computer make it faster? Now, HowStuffWorks is a site that I've enjoyed for many, many years. And uh, they, they definitely explain things quite well here. So they're, they actually go into clicky clicky. I'm about to oh, froze the browser here. Ah, there we go. Ah, da, 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 getting ahead of ourselves. Or maybe the uh, hard drive went to sleep or something like that. No, there's no cache on the. Wait, oh yeah, I did move the cache over to a mechanical drive that might be shutting off. I'll have to change that setting later. Shut up, C Cleaner. I'm trying to do a video. <laughs> oh, C Cleaner is a new version of it. Whatever. Does adding more RAM to your computer make it faster? Uh, up to a point, adding RAM will normally cause your computer to seem faster on certain types of operations. That is correct. It gives the appearance of a speed increase when in reality you're just uncorking what was already available in the computer to begin with. Da 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 da, microprocessor, etc. The operating system takes up space, da da da. So they actually described it correctly, but I expect that from how stuff works. Life hacker, do you really need more than 4 gigs of RAM? Da 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 da, extremely lowly, da 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 da. Let's see, let's clarify what more RAM can and can't do for you. The biggest benefit has been better multitasking. Da da da, like Photoshop, Outlook, Firefox, you know, have a lot of memory means you can quickly switch back and forth between the different applications without writing the process memory out to the page file. Da da da, so yeah, hard drive. Again, we're mentioning virtual memory type stuff. Your RAM generally does not make your PC faster, it just allows it to do more things at once. Hey, what do you know? More RAM will not make single tasks faster. Finally, some level-headedness. Anywho, what hardware upgrade will best speed up my PC if I can afford one? Da -da 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 -da. While RAM is easily the cheapest upgrade you can make, most modern computers aren't going to see a huge performance benefit from upgrading. Usually, four gigs should be enough for the average person. It's going to be da -da 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 -da. still rocking five hundred twelve megs. It could definitely be worth an upgrade. Otherwise, you can probably pass. So, yay, cool. I mean, so Lifehacker has the right idea. But then we get over to CNET. Three ways to increase your computer's performance. Let's see, add memory. One of the quickest ways to increase your computer's performance is by adding more memory, also known as RAM. Interesting. This is kind of a weasel word type thing, though, because it says increase performance, not necessarily talking about speed or anything, but... I guess you could desperately say that, un uh, that removing a bo- uh, <coughs> excuse me, that removing a bottleneck actually does uh, increase performance. Speed up everything. PC world. Hmm, not looking good here. Upgrade your RAM. It's one of the most cost-effective upgrades you can make to speed up a sluggish computer. Uh, no. How about unbottleneck a sluggish computer? When a si They even explain themselves shortly afterwards. When a system runs short of RAM, it must swap the overflow data of the hard drive, which can significantly slow performance. Here's how to add more memory. da 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 So does adding RAM improve computer speed? Adding more random access memory can increase computer speed, although it is not guaranteed and often depends on other factors, says WiseGeek. Yeah, maybe it's because it's not really a speed increase. When you add more RAM, you just uncork your computer so that it does more things electronically. Uh, yeah, yeah. When the other factors, aside from a shortage of RAM, adding more memory might help, but those secondary factors need to be addressed to the best possible performance. Okay, so they kind of clean things up afterwards. Uh, did you know... Bad luck in the U.S., but good luck in Japan. Oh, cool. Yeah, whatever pop-up ads. Are computers with more RAM potentially faster, if not all memory is usually in use? Yes, because the operating system can use the extra RAM as disk cache. Again, you know, you're talking about... Again, you're talking about going electronic instead of mechanical, which speeds up access to data on disk. Extra RAM won't make CPU-bound computations faster, though. Will adding more RAM speed up my PC? Imagine RAM, etc., etc., 4G, 2G. Now we're finally talking about latency. 
Now we're finally talking latency here. So after all of these articles, it took this little amateurish discussion on Yahoo Answers, well, as in not an article anyways, it finally took, finally we're talking timings. But are we talking actual like memory speed or something like that? Max frequency you achieve in dual channels, 2000 megahertz, it'll give you 1333 megahertz, etc, etc, etc. But it took some digging to finally find some kind of reference to latency. Again, and again, and again, and again, and again, when people talk RAM upgrades, they're talking capacity, rather than speed, or even latency, for that matter. Hence, the mythos, and why I want to absolutely deconstruct it. Lastly, let's talk about tuning and stuff like that, and the whole thing with tweaking speed and why I don't buy memory, I don't rebuy all the RAM in my systems all over again when a new speed comes out. There's a little something out there in the world of statistics known as significant digits. And of course, as we know, numbers can be uh, messed with in order to present a case of various types. I mean, even the way you draw a, a chart can bias it towards a certain outcome, and some people who have more of a background in this stuff will easily catch when charts are being fudged or numbers are being messed with or something along those lines or metrics are an issue or something like that. However, when it comes to speed of the memory, speed of your memory, you really do get to a point where you're splitting hairs. Here's an article from Tech Radar, and that, first of all, they say the right thing. That RAM is one of the cheapest, easiest to install, generally most effective upgrades you can make to a system, not saying speed specifically. Should you pick your memory based on latency, capacity, or operating frequency, we get down to some of these bars here. Oh, look! This looks like an improvement! Oh, wait, at SciSoft Sandra, a benchmark, a program that's specifically supposed to attach numbers to your hardware. Now, when we get out of benchmark land, ooh, PC Mark 08, not, not as much of a difference now, is it, when it comes to latency timings and things along those lines. But, all right, so, Bioshock Infinite, hmm, pretty close together. Company of Heroes 2, close together. Metro Last Light, close together. Sleeping Dogs, close together. Tomb Raider, close together. Dual Channel, close together. Company of Heroes, close together. Metro Last Light, oh, look, fine. Finally! But it could be a fluke with the statistics, who knows, because, I mean, it kind of, what the heck happened there with uh, this, be, this not being higher than this? I wonder, you know? Sleeping Dogs, close together. Tomb Raider, close together. Dual Channel, oh, another big change again! Oh, but it's for a benchmarking program. Da 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 So, marketing is marketing is marketing is marketing is marketing once again. And this is the thing, though. Even in the cases where I've seen some footage of people with APU systems that were affected by the memory speed, you're talking 5 to 10 frames a second. Now, if you're down around 20 to going from 20 to 30, that could, you know, be something notable. But even that has a significant digits element once you get between 30 and 60. I mean, if you're at 50 frames a second and you go up to 60, how much are you going to notice that versus, like, 10 to 20 or 20 to 30? So, again, it's all about significant digits and not making PC hardware into a giant money sink like it's infamously known for out there. So, this is the sort of stuff that I want to be the part two of the story about because I have heard that RAM is the poor man's upgrade for years. And there was a time when I actually had to defend a RAM upgrade because someone actually, you know, flipped the, this thing, this discussion the other way and was like, oh, what are you upgrading the RAM for? Uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, well, I want to use virtual memory less often because in college I encountered numerous cheap or under-upgraded computers, so to speak, like trying to run Windows XP on Pentium 2 systems. You know, I ran into a lot of systems in college that didn't have enough RAM and thus they were getting bottlenecked all over the place by constant use of virtual memory. And it's funny because I've had this argument before, and they were like, well, what are you upgrading the RAM for? I mean, it's not like the computer makes the data appear out of nowhere. It has to come off the hard drive at some point. Yes, it did have to come off the hard drive at some point. But, you know, when it comes to disk caching and virtual memory and things that are mechanical that don't need to be, it's good to get rid of the mechanical aspect of all of this and go solid state or whatever else available. Heck, I even work with a tech guy right now who is actually playing around with RAM disks for everything. Yeah, that old 80s technology, RAM disks, which were used to make up for crappy slow drives back in the day, has, has enjoyed a kind of a resurgent popularity among people who know how to use them properly and guard against power down situations that could mess up a RAM disk. So, yeah. As far as the YouTube comments are concerned, let me just say that 
When it comes to YouTube comments, I am con I am very familiar with how trolling has evolved on YouTube. I look for things like covert trolls, passive aggressive trolls, hit and run trolls, add on trolls, and the various ways that people who want to tick people off on the internet have evolved their methods over the last several years. I am on the lookout for the pattern of abusive behavior that indicates one of these types of trolls and will take action if I believe I've encountered it. Regardless of whether or not I am right. So, if you don't want to have the wrong, if you don't want to send the wrong impression or something like that, keep that in mind because I, you know, well, I'm just not, I'm not here to argue endlessly in the comments. As a matter of fact, I like to blow, not, no, I don't like to blow off the comments so much, but I, let's just say that PewDiePie turning off the comments to move all the feedback to Twitter isn't offending me as much as it used to because do I really want to spend all the time working on comments and stuff or do I want to spend the time actually making more videos and messing around with more computers in my already limited free time, so... Yeah, passive-aggressive trolling, I will treat that as seriously as if, as if someone blew up in my face all at once. Now, a while back, I recorded a little discussion, about a half hour or so, on YouTube trolling and the various types of YouTube trolls that exist these days. And because of what happened with this video, that's going to be my next upload. And everything that I was working on prior to this Quicko flick is going to be on hold until eh, maybe the weekend or so. So, anyways. <sighs> right. So, that, I hope that clears a few things up regarding the whole RAM situation, because I have about had it with technophobes, and even, there's even pseudoscience when it comes to computers, and it's ridiculous, because it's not hard to learn the real science of how computers work, instead of spreading what's essentially the 21st century version of old wives' tales all around the internet, and even offline among friends and family. Anywho, till next time, this is Multimedia J. Signing off. Thanks for stopping by.